Let's give you this. Good said. <laughs> Hey everybody, <laughs> oh, welcome to the Office 365 Pulse. We have all of us together today. It's very exciting. Um, it's exciting that we're all together. It's not a very exciting roadmap. Um, so uh, what can we say a couple of weeks before Ignite? We actually talked about unless there's anything super exciting that hits the roadmap, we're going to stick to doing the PDF uh, for the next two weeks before the roadmap or before the before Ignite because they're just holding everything close for those moments. You know, we're going to have big moments at Ignite. Um, so right now we have little changes on the roadmap. So uh, we'll kind of go through those pretty quickly, probably not a long show today and not anything of great excitement. So if you're looking for us to just change your life today on this show, it's not going to happen. I don't think we're going to talk about a single feature that you've been waiting for today, but we'll we'll go over it pretty quickly and uh, then we'll let you guys get back to your day. But oh, pretty simple, Tom, you know, why don't you just, I mean, I'm just like. You challenge gauntlet here, didn't you? I know, <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Let's just and be honest. Yeah, <laughs> There's I, only I, so I, many I, minutes of a day. If you're limited on time today, I wouldn't spend them with us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since I have the day off, as soon as I hang up, I'm out of here. So that, that's <laughs> so the, um, one of the few things in development that I'm <laughs> going to talk about that is exciting, but there's not a lot of detail yet, is they're going to allow you to start customizing search results for your organization. So the way that's written up is new support for custom result pages and web parts in Microsoft Search allow you to create a new custom search results page in Microsoft and use web parts developed using SharePoint framework to extend search queries. I know that as part of the migration we're going through here from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint Online, there have been some sites where we've done custom search pages with various options mm -hmm. and things like that, that really aren't able to be replicated in SharePoint Online unless we go with a lot of custom coding right now, it's like, nope, not doing that. Um, so to see that they're actually putting some more uh, effort and, and work into Microsoft search in terms of how you can get the data out and possibly what you can do to give a better experience for front end data entry. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's gonna be very positive and it will, result in people getting better search results, which makes them happier, which makes us happier, so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah, I, this one is gonna be a good one. You, people have been waiting for this, but they talked about this at the SharePoint conference, I think it's SharePoint 2017, um, where you know people really want this. They want these search customizations and it just hasn't been possible in the modern world. That's when they went back and it went from a SharePoint search to a Microsoft search. And so now they're ready to come back in and put all these pieces. So. I really hope it really does make it in Q1 of 2020, but we'll see. One is not going to hold her breath is one. <laughs> one is not going to hold her breath. <laughs> um, the other one is Outlook for Android and iOS. You're getting all sorts of stuff. Android, you guys are getting the time to leave notifications. We've had this for a while in iOS. It basically uh, looks at your calendar and your next appointment and says, uh, hey, Jennifer, you've got lunch on the other side of Dallas and based on traffic, you're going to be late if you do not leave right now. So get in your car and go. Um, so you're gonna be getting things like that. Some better um, do not disturb settings. So you can pick and choose who gets to bug you during do not disturb hours, different time zone support. So there's probably what, seven or eight different um, Outlook for iOS and Outlook for Android. Uh, little tiny features that are coming. Again, probably little things that annoy you that you'll be glad that you're there, but little nothing quality of life fixes. Yeah, little quality of life fixes, but nothing that's like gonna make or break your business. So I um, actually had two that I wanted to talk about. Awesome, go for it. I thought were kind of cool. Um, so the first one, I'm gonna be the younger person on this show and talk about uh, some of my experience <laughs> with it. So they announced something that they call delivery optimization. It's in preview. Um, what delivery optimization is, is actually something that you've seen in the gaming community for a little bit, which is, yeah, yeah we're going there on the show. 
show. But um, basically, it's a way with Windows 10 technology that if new updates come out that you need to download from Microsoft, they're basically going to allow you to do peer-to-peer transfer. And you can almost think of it as almost like torrenting from other peers. Uh, but what this really does is it's going to allow way better download speed. So a new update comes out. You don't just have to go and download from these dedicated Microsoft servers. As people get it downloaded, there's going to be options that are probably automatically turned on that you can go in and control that you can do peer-to-peer transferring as well too. You see this a lot, as I kind of mentioned in the gaming community, when new patches and new updates come out for games. Well, it goes really slow if, you know, 8 million people are trying to download the same patch from a couple of servers. (laughs) So what they do is as people get it downloaded, they allow them to upload to other people that they're close to and that they can share with. And it's not noticeable. You don't, you know, slow down. It doesn't affect your performance or anything. But it's something that definitely distributes the information a lot quicker. Um, So I actually see them as learning from some of the places that already exist in the industry elsewhere. It's actually pretty cool. Like, I I think it's something that will be pretty good and it will mean you get your updates quicker. There's less downtime, stuff like that. So I was happy to see that. Um, the second one that I thought was cool, this this worried me at first, but the more I thought about it, I think it's kind of okay. They announced, and it's a really weird sounding name, so I'll explain it, but they say graph resource specific consent. What this basically means is for the uh, is for the team's application. Um, for those of you who don't know, the graph is the API that uses to do all things Office 365. So if you're a developer, if you want to go and you want to script something to do, you're using the graph API. What they're basically going to allow people to do is if you're in teams and say you're an owner of a specific team, you can actually now call the graph API to do manipulations and do basic coding on the team that you're an owner of without having to be an admin throughout the whole 10 or a Teams admin or exchange admin without having to be a higher level admin. Uh, previously, if you wanted to do this, you would have had to go in and give someone either global admin or Teams admin permission so that way they had you know, control over everything. But you know, if I have one random person that's a dev that wants to do some custom stuff to their channel, maybe I'm not as comfortable giving him control over everything on the tenant. So this is Microsoft basically opening up the API to where you can have more granular permissions in Teams but not have to be this overarching admin. And I kind of see this as a win, I guess. At first, I was like, I don't know if I want people that aren't admins going in and doing graph coding. But realistically speaking, this is letting you not have to give those people yeah. a higher level of admin permission. So I guess like if you have a dev that for whatever reason wants to go in and do their own custom, which like I don't know why you would. Like it's pretty easy to add new channels and things like that that you could right. do with this dev work. But if you had someone that, you know, God forbid, wanted to go through and do that, um, I guess they're going to potentially be allowing everyone to do this uh, early next year. Nice. Awesome. Uh, there is one more team item that fell right underneath that one in the list, and that is users can pin apps to the team's left rail. So that's really nice now, and it's really making it to where Teams becomes more of your overall day-to-day, this is where I live. Your hub. Environment. Yeah. Yes, the perfect analogy. And to where you can actually put now uh, pinned applications on your left side navigation so you don't have to keep going out to other places to launch things. You can now launch them while you're in Teams. Hey, look, Outlook in Teams. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's going to be a very positive thing where people will once again be able to stay in one place yeah. and get everything in a single context instead of having to bounce all over the place to get their stuff. Yeah. Well, cool. Moving on to the rolling out, there's a couple of neat ones. I remember when this one came out to... Uh, E3 and uh, E5, I know Tom was really excited. Oh, and, I, I, and, I love it. I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's rolling out to the government suites and rolling out to just more availability. And that's the My Analytics dashboard and the My Analytics email. And I think these are great features. So I'm glad to finally see this in GCC. Um, so excited, excited about that. And that's where you're getting the uh, analytics of how much time are you spent focusing, how much time are you spending in meetings. And I think it's a, a, a passive way for me to get a reminder of how much time did I spend focusing, how much time did I spend um, with certain people. And it makes me really see that, you know, who am I connecting with? Am I connecting with the people I should be connecting with? And so it's nice when I get that information there. And so I'm I'm glad to see that coming to GCC um, and came pretty quickly because I think it came finally to E3 in the last month or so, two months maybe. I, I know we talked yeah, about it on the right show, on. so it's not been um, it's not been too long ago. So coming into GCC, so excited to see that that one rolling out. Um, 
And yeah, our government also, colleagues can be terrified with Big Brother, just like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't. It sends you your information. It's not like it's sending information. Like I don't get information on my employees and what they're doing. I just get information. That's on me. that's so the gut fine. reaction I have from every client I've ever worked with. Mm-hmm. Is like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> I, I think the first time I did that as an internal Spark One tip. One of the first responses I got back was, this is interesting and terrifying. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Really, people, come on. Uh, Well, how about you guys? Do you guys see anything interesting in the rolling out that you guys want to mention? Uh, There's only one thing really that I've seen in here that floats my boat other than, again, a whole bunch of Outlook stuff again. Um, External sharing reports for OneDrive. They're going to give you the ability to use a report to say, hey, I want to see all the shared access content that I have in my OneDrive that's being shared externally. And I think that's really good for governance purposes and for Mm. audit purposes. So you can say, hey, I know I shared this document out to, you know, uh, vendor X not too long ago, but now, you know, a year's passed and you're thinking, hey, I should go check this. And now vendor X is working for a competitor. You probably don't want to be sharing content with them anymore. Uh, So this makes it really easy for you to tell whether or not you need to go and do some cleanup on what you're sharing with whom. Yeah, they they had one that I just thought sounded cool. Uh, They said adding malware zap toggle to the security compliance center. And I just pictured this like lightning bolt button that you're like (laughs) smiting from malware. Uh, That's really not it. Um, Basically, uh, zap stands for zero hour auto purge. It's basically if a malware comes out that makes it through the system and you need to go in and purge it, you have the ability to do that. Up until now, this was one of those security features that you had to go into PowerShell to do, which, you know, if you're comfortable with PowerShell, that's cool. Cool, but if you're not and suddenly malware is out to your users, you're probably having a pretty stressful evening. Um, so this is them just taking a feature that's only been available in PowerShell previously and developing a GUI-based button for it, which is we're always happy to see. So nice, yeah. nice. Awesome. Well then moving into launched, um, we have a couple of a couple of things that I know we've been tracking as they were in development and then rolling out and now launching, you know, the Microsoft Teams on hold music, we all kind of laugh about that and say we need to have music (laughs) on hold when we're in here. So that one has moved to the launching. Um, We also have the analytics in the government space has moved. So usage analytics for government cloud has launched, which is why you're now seeing the my analytics email is rolling out is because this feature of the usage analytics has launched. So we have that there. Um, as well as I think some of the, I should stop talking and let others talk. <laughs> I'm going to just list them all out. So Tom, I'm going to let you talk before I say all of them. And you're like, Jen, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> Mr. Duff yields his time on the floor to his colleague from Texas. <laughs> uh, the only thing that I saw that I thought was really cool um, <laughs> They're basically doing a thing. Um, One of the goals of Microsoft rebranded to Microsoft 365 was to centralize a whole bunch of different services together. Um, They are bringing some of the functionality that you see with Intune with some of the security functionality that you see in Azure uh, Active Directory and some of the premium plans there. Um, So one of the things that they'll be rolling out to everyone soon is there'll be a centralized Microsoft 365 admin center that allows you to both do device management and some of those like conditional access policies policies and stuff. So rather than having to navigate to multiple different areas inside of the Azure portal for that are kind of separate services, they're just organizing them together because if you're using Intune, you're probably wanting to pair that with some of the policies like conditional access that you're doing. So really, this is just more everyone coming together as a bigger happy family. So I never would have guessed four years ago that owning and maintaining an admin center would have been a full-time job, but it's changed (laughs) just about as much as everything else has. So, you know, remember all the sessions. (laughs) Remember all the sessions we had? It's like, well, you're an you know, you're a uh, an IT pro and what are you gonna do now? And your cloud's taking (laughs) away your job. I'm like, no, not really. Your job's just changed. (laughs) You're now more important because you're enabling people, Tom. There you go. <laughs> I was an enabler for a long time there. <laughs> I've given this speech at conferences a lot. <laughs> too funny, too funny. Uh, All right. So Tom, did you see anything on the roll or on the launched list that, that yeah, there, was there... A, there was a Teams item out there 
for enhanced delegation, but again, that falls into, again, them spending more time working on rolling out Skype type features into Teams for calling purposes. And this has to do, you know, of who can delegate calls and set up things and, and stuff like that. So if you're only using Teams in a non-calling environment, that one's not gonna affect you. But if you're starting to look at Teams as your replacement for Skype or your, you know, on-site phone system, that's another thing that will add to the possibilities of you using it and being able to have somebody working on your behalf to get things done. Like if you're an executive and you have an admin, boy, that would be, I really need an admin. (laughs) Actually, no, I need a vacation more than I need an admin. I'll work on the vacation first. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Well, once again, there's nothing in the canceled category. So we've reached the end of our list. Um, So I think if, if you're getting tired of us having short videos, don't worry. Post Ignite will probably have like a 12 hour video for you guys. <laughs> It'll be wonderful. Oh, that'll be great. Um, Adam's going to be on site at Ignite. I am going to yeah, be. Yeah, if you're at Ignite, this. come hang out. That's yeah, what it's I'm going to be at Disney Azure World. Signal. Nice. So that's going to be, world. I am, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then I have to send up. me pictures of all the Star Wars stuff that I haven't seen, even though you I have will. zero, desi- well, you like I Star like Wars, Star but you Wars. have less of a desire than I do. I need to vicariously live through someone. So yeah, la- last night we were, I was talking with my husband and he was talking about Star Trek and then he started talking about Star Wars. And I kind of said, maybe they were the same thing. And he, he looked at me and he goes, <laughs> I didn't oh God. say they were. Nerd-o-pa, I didn't say, Jen. I know, Nerd-o-pa. but I didn't say they were the same thing. I mean, I know Star Trek and Star Wars weren't the same thing, but he was talking about two new shows that were coming out, and he named them. And I was like, "Well, yeah, we'll watch both Star Trek shows." And he looked at me, and he was like, "One of those is Star is, Wars." Is he excited for the Mandalorian? <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. And I was like, "Well, we can watch that new Star Trek show too." And he goes, "That is Star Wars," and I'm like. It's a show about the bounty hunters from Star Wars. <laughs> like, it's going to be good. My bad. <laughs> I'm make sorry. It so, Yoda, make it so. <laughs> uh, if you haven't we'll done so, you can also stuff. buy your tickets for the new Star Wars show. So get on that. All right. This has nothing to do with Office 365. Voice. <laughs> it's it's right. important updates that our audience cares about, Ted. <laughs> Did you know in Microsoft Stream, you can now trim off the end of your trailer if you'd like to? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, <laughs> we bye, will guys. see you in a Bye, few weeks. everyone. Thanks.